Would you like your own personal meteor shower for, say, your birthday or wedding? Well, Astro Live Experiences wants to make this happen. I'm Zach, this is Zach DTV, and I think we're going to take a look at this. Astro Live Experiences, or ALE, is a space startup out of Japan, and their Sky Canvas project plans to bring man made meteor showers on demand. I know, right? Is there anything we can't do? Generally, a meteor shower is one of those things where you really have to be dedicated to seeing it. Outside in the middle of the night, in a dark field somewhere, cup of cocoa in your hands, and watching the beauty that the heavens bring to us. So that's what ALE wants to bring us, that majestic wonder of the heavens above us, on demand, and bright enough to be seen in cities. This project originally started as a concept for the opening ceremonies of the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, but has blossomed into a commercial enterprise. To make these meteor displays, ALE is building two satellites. The one is nearing completion and looks like it will be going into orbit in December of this year, with the second one following shortly behind. Eventually, they plan on having six satellites all together to make their own constellation that will allow them to make an on-demand meteor shower anywhere around the globe. They want to set them up for specific times. They want to be able to hit anywhere at 8.30, 9 o'clock, and 9.30. Late enough that it's dark, early enough the kids can still watch it. Natural shooting stars occur when small dust particles enter our atmosphere and burn up on their way through. These are small particles too. We're looking several millimeters across can produce gigantic fireballs. A normal shooting star coming into our atmosphere can be moving as fast as say 9,000 miles per hour. Now because the projectiles launched from their satellite will not be traveling that fast, researchers had to make their own shooting star material. And what they ended up coming up with was basically a ceramic infused with a color particle. They won't tell you exactly what they used, but it's basically like what they used on the space shuttle or on any re-entry vehicle. This man-made shooting star that they launch is also around the size of a ping pong ball. But in lab testing, in their electric arc heated high pressure wind tunnel, they were able to see glow from their different spheres at 70 times the amount of a normal meteor. So these are going to be extremely bright shooting stars. And this gives these meteor showers an expected view range of around 200 miles from the center of the target. Another interesting thing about this project is when the satellite releases some of its pellets to create the uh, meteor show, those pellets will cover a third of the Earth before they enter the atmosphere above their target. Now that does bring up some concerns here. We already have a massive problem with space debris. The last estimate I was able to find was somewhere around 500,000 pieces of space junk that are big enough to do damage to other satellites. Now you can see where it could be a problem for a company firing ping pong sized balls a third of the way around the Earth. That could destroy just about any space object that it comes in contact with moving at those speeds. To make sure there won't be any problems, ALE plans on keeping their satellite below the space station but above low Earth orbit. As of right now, there's only 40 satellites in that area of airspace. So with a little bit of a head planning, they can definitely make this happen safely. The problem arises when people like Elon Musk with his internet program put another 7,500 satellites up 200 miles above the Earth. They will be directly in the line of fire of this project, and that's not even counting all the spy satellites that calmly orbit around that area that we don't know where they're at. They are purposely not tracked by public sites. Now, because of this, ALE did state that if they're ever at risk of hitting another satellite, they will call off the launch. But could you imagine the repercussions if they were to take out a government spy satellite? Actually, I'm kind of all for that. Let's get as many of those down as we can. If all goes well in their December launch, their first meteor shower should take place early summer of 2019. And after that, they're up for private purchase. They plan on their customers being uh, cities, amusement parks, the mega super rich, weddings, anniversaries, things like that. And they don't have a price per shower marked down yet. But they say they could stay underneath a major city's cost for those 
big fireworks display. Say, for example, the one in New York City, which costs $6 million for the 4th of July. So if you have an extra $6 million just laying around and you want your own personal meteor shower, give Astro Live Experiences a call and they can make it happen for you. So now what do you think? Is this a good use of our spacefaring abilities or is this just preposterous and uh, wasteful? You know, I just thought about it. What happens if one of their satellites get hit and then spreads out its payload of hundreds of ping pong size man-made asteroids around the Earth? That could cause problems with our satellites. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to click that like button. My channel relies on those to grow. And if you're new here, click that subscribe button so you know when I put out something new. Generally, that's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So hopefully, I will see you here again soon. And until next time, just have fun and be safe.